sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Unrestricted Podcast. I'm your host, Ish Berry, and joining me today, so happy to have this guest back on. We have the reigning, defending, the undisputed 2023 Masters female bodybuilding champion, Rashana Boswell. Welcome back. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yes, 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 you did. Yes. Give myself a gold star. Yes. So how have you been? I mean, it's, I mean, I'm good, really. Honestly, it's just, you know, it was, last year was a good year. So now it's like, okay, you have to top last year. But I mean, last year was really, I mean, it was a good year. Everything kind of went accordingly. I mean, I did three shows, you know, I placed in three shows. We made it back to the Olympia. You know, it's, it's yeah, I, I couldn't have asked really for a better year. Um, so yeah, I had a blast. And so now it's just kind of like, okay, what, what what's next? And I mean, we, yeah. we just started prep, but I did, I had a, a good off season. A lot of good, just some downtime, let my body recover, more time with the family, you know. But yeah, it's we had a really good year. You know, definitely had a good year last year. So that's, that's dope. Um, can you say yet what shows you're gonna be you're looking at competing at this year? Um, yeah. I am undecided as of right now. Um, I'm doing any show I want. I don't know. I haven't really. I really. It's really undecided right now. We just, like I said, we really just started prep. My coach keeps saying the same thing. He's like, we got a show yet? I was like, no. I mean, and it's the schedule's kind of still changing. They just added a show and another show, which coincidentally is in Romania. Um, and so there's a couple shows. And then the Chicago Pro is still here, uh, which would be local for me and probably the most economical if I decided to do something. You know, I need a qualifier. I need a, I need a qualifier. So at least one show as a qualifier. Um, I've, always, I've done the Rising Phoenix the last couple years. That's an invite. Um, so if I get invited back, I do that show for sure. Um, so that's definitely on the map. But yeah, I'm just I'm just really, really, really taking my time with this prep. Um, put a lot into it and just taking a, a slow, slow approach to it. So I mean, first show is this weekend. So I'm I'm looking to see who actually competes and kind of how that show plays out. So a lot of it for me is strategy. I'm like, we got to make sure we make it to this this sixth Olympia. So <laughs> a lot of yeah. strategy goes into it too. So um, I'm competing this year. You'll see me when you see me. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll get off the lookout. Yeah. Uh, but just know that I'm in back. prep. Know that I'm in prep. Okay. So. <laughs> I, I, I love your um, your prep file stuff because actually we were talking about you yesterday. Um, I didn't get it on air. It was after I had wrapped up with, with Asha and her husband and we were in the studio that I rent. And I was like, um, I think... I think Rashana Boswell, like she's really brought up her lower body. I was like, and don't, and I'm not trying to sound like weird or anything, but just being the guy, yeah. I was like, that's that's a, that's a deep dish Chicago booty right there. That does she have brought up <laughs> her lower body big time? <laughs> um, yeah, now we just gotta lean it out and focus. Like we need striated glutes for stage. So I'm like, yeah, it's <laughs> it's a work both ways to get it there, then to lean it out. And, it's a whole process of Lord knows. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And, um, what was your prep walking into the um, the Masters Olympia? And actually, huh, before you answer that question, can you explain to people what the difference is between the Masters Olympia and the, I guess you could say like the regular Olympia? Because correct me if it's, I'm wrong. It's, it's, it's really, it's, 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 masters, it's masters, and, and masters and Open. So it was just, it's Masters and Open. Um, so Masters over 40. They brought it back. So they had done masters before for men's bodybuilding. They had never done it for all the categories. And this was about 10 years ago. So mm-hmm. it was kind of like this big to do and bringing it back and, you know, bringing it, you know, over 40 athletes who have competed. And so like for us, we still, we had to, you know, we were invited. They wanted contest history and to see how you've done, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, we got, I made the list as far as the invite. And some of those were competitors that I have seen compete, you know, decades ago. And I'm like, yo, I'm stepping on stage with Jay Fuchs yeah. right now. I'm stepping on stage with Virginia Sanchez. And I'm like, yo, okay. You know, but it's 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 one of those. So, but yeah, so it was, it's, it's uh, over 40 versus open um, Olympia. So, and it was just the first time back in over 10, over 10, almost 12 years, I think, since they had brought it. Um, so, yeah, so, yeah, so it was just, it was a huge, it was 18 of us. So it was a huge, huge win for me, um, like, 
definitely my coach. Like if we if we pull this off, it's it's, it's gonna be a big deal. So <laughs> so yeah, definitely my uh, biggest my biggest fan thus far. Yeah. Correct. Congratulations on that. You killed it. Like I have in my notes here on my laptop. Like I have. I went to the NPC website just to pull up your contest history from last year that we're gonna go over in a minute. It's like you know you look phenomenal. Like head to toe, everything just spot on. Yeah, you you really deserve that. And I keep forgetting to going back to something we said in the last episode last year. Like I keep forgetting that you're forty. Like. You know what I mean? Like, again, but I'll be 43 this year, so. Oh, wow. <laughs> but and that, right. that was funny because when I had did for a master's, I, I remember Elena, she messaged me. She's like, can you send over really like a, either your birth certificate or your driver's license as proof of, of birth? And I was like, okay, but well, well, you know, yes. <laughs> if I just saw you on the street and didn't know who you were, I'd be like, oh, she cute. She in her 20s. Okay, you know. <laughs> She got some muscle on. All right, like, <laughs> Olympia. So, what was what was prep like for you going into the uh, the the Masters Olympia? Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I I had a I mean, I had a good prep. I think we knew once the list came out, like the final list was like sent out, and I actually didn't even know. Like, I had it was funny because I got like people were sending me messages on Instagram. I got a couple texts even before I actually saw or had got the actual email. They're like, yo, congratulations. And I'm like, wait, what? What, what happened? They're like, Romania, you made the list. And I was like, oh, I mean, the prize money was like 10 grand too. So I was like, sweet, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. But like, I didn't know anything. My wife's like, did you even, I'm like, no, I literally saw the show. I was like, oh, that'd be a nice trip and a nice trap, you know, it'd be something cool to do. But I didn't know, like, she comes back, she's like, you know, it's a 13 hour flight, right? I was like, oh. And like, I didn't have a passport. Like, it was like, I was scrambling. I'm like, okay, I need to go apply for my passport because I've literally never had one. So I'm like, let me get my passport. Let me do the, it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, everything came together, but it was like, it was like crazy time at first. My coach was like, we're just going to prep because you're just going to get it. And like, we'll, we'll, we, we're going to have to be in prep and make, you know. Um, but we, we had a, a good prep. I think, you know, I was pretty, pretty focused. Um, going into the show, there was definitely some pressure. Like there had been predictions about the show, and that I was was a front runner to 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 win the show on Olympia TV. They had talked about it, so it was like yeah. it's kind of that pressure. Like it's literally yours to win or lose. You know, if I if I win, great, people will be happy. But if I lose, it's huge, and and it, they'll definitely remember that. You know, so it's you know, so my coach made sure to remind me of that frequently. He's like, you know, if, if we win this thing, this is huge for us. But if we lose this, it's an even bigger loss. Like, he's like, you really don't, it, 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 it would, you know, it's, it would be hard on my bodybuilding career. It, it really, you know, for me, wow. that really set, set myself apart as someone that is a true elite athlete, you know, so it's, you know, getting to that, to that level. So that's what this did for us, for sure. Um, and this win did for us. So, I mean, there were a couple of times he's like, you're going to let someone else that's not as good as you beat you because you're slacking and not working hard enough. Like you're literally going to get beat because you won't work harder. You know, so it's, and so he's, yeah. he's very good with motiv motivating me and saying the right thing at the right time. And I'm like, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> you know, put them together. Um, yeah. But, I mean, he's it's, it's pretty strict, but I mean, that's what I need. I need someone that's very meticulous and detailed. Same thing with my posing coach. She gets on me and calls me like, we need to schedule your schedule at this time on this day for the next eight weeks. Like I have people in my life that keep me very, very focused on the task at hand. So like, that's what I need. And that's why I'm, I can just focus and do what I'm told and just be good and just follow the plan. <laughs> you know, so yeah. it's, you know, yeah. So. All right, well, that's, that's dope. Um, well, so what, I mean, when they called your name for first place, I mean, what I could imagine what what that must have felt like. Wow, how was that for you? Um, I, you know, it was just it, it was just an amazing feeling. It was just like it, it really, really was like every single workout, everything leading up to that moment, like it all literally mattered. Like, and it was like, and it it it, it just paid off. It paid off. It it went exactly how I wanted it to go, and that's kind of and. That was the mindset going into the show at a point. It was like, you know, if I just continue to just dig in and just do and exactly what I'm supposed to do, even when it sucks, even when I don't want to, even when I'm trying, if I just do it, yeah, there's going to be that day where I'm going to be like, thank God I did it, <laughs> you know, and that was that day, you know, and that was it. And I was like, yo, yeah, and it was, yeah, and the girls that were next to me, they were like, you got it, you got it. And I, and I was, it was, and it came down to the pose down with me and Barbara, and I'm just like, 
who is this girl? Like, <laughs> you, like and I remember, I remember we came from prejudging. They made us go. We went, we went an extra third round in prejudging, and it was just me and her. And I'm like, fuck, like, who, what the hell? He's like, you guys got another round? I'm like, okay, here we go. And then I remember getting back to my phone, like, once we were done. And I swear, I texted my coach. He was the first person I texted. I'm like, I'm sorry, I love my way. But I texted my coach first. I'm like, who was that? And he was like, she's big and she's in shape, but you you have better lines. You're, you, I was like, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> He's like, it's close, but I think we got it. We got it. And I was like, okay. But I, was, I literally was like, who is that? Like, who is she? Because, <laughs> like, honestly, like, I didn't look over. I just knew there was someone. But I was like, yeah. I, don't, I can't even, do, you know. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's great. Yeah, it must have been hard. I mean, did the judges tell you what did it come down to, or how, like, uh, the difference in uh in points between you two? Um, it, it wasn't that close. I mean, it was like a three or four point difference um between us. It was like four points, so it wasn't that close. Um, but I think she had a great physique. I mean, she had a great physique. She was lean. I mean, you know, she, and it was like that extra mass. It was always that. For me, and it's funny because my me and my coach, he actually told me, he's like, you're not massively made, you're beautifully made. He's like, and that's what we say. He's like, I'm not gonna be some mass monster that's just not my build, that's not the structure. He's like, but your shape. And he's like, if we dial your shape in and with your shape and the muscle bellies that you do have, he's like, if we bring that in just a little leaner and a little drier, he's like, let's see what that looks like. He's like, that's that's something to beat, you know. So we brought some really good looks thus far. I think what we're working on right now is absolutely gonna gonna top that. So I'm, I'm actually really excited about kind of where we're at yep. right now and just kind of enjoying prep. I'm like, I'm just kind of rolling along. Okay. <laughs> you know? so, yeah, this is, yeah, it's a very interesting one, so. <laughs> All right, nice. And moving on to next, because you did a, a Rising Phoenix too, right? That was a September. Mm -hmm. and you placed in the uh, top 10, right? Yeah, and it's nice. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's still that's and considering the like you said that one's invitation only. Uh, Other women on stage. Um, what was your oh, feedback from the uh, on that one? Oh, it's like it was a total of sixteen. Okay, yeah. Whoa, yeah, it was a pretty stacked house. Oh yeah, it's it's the it's it's all it's the precursors of the Olympia is what we always say is like the Rising Phoenix. Pretty much three fourths of that lineup is going to be at the Olympia, <laughs> so it's you you're like yeah. you're going to see them again in like you know six weeks. Um. So like I don't know, the Rising Phoenix is a it's an awesome show. I mean, prize money's there, so the goal is always to get into top five. So that's the goal, you know, to get the invite again this year. And I mean, they they go by your past history. I've you know been invited a couple times. Um, it's nice because they they cover the travel, they cover all that stuff. So it's like that, that's, that's a big awesome. deal. So yeah, they, yeah, they actually they fly us out there and they cover all of our expenses, hair, makeup, yeah, the whole bit. So oh, that's, um, okay. that's yeah. Good. okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's, so that's definitely yeah. that's definitely the incentive to get that invite. If you get that invite, it's 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 definitely a big deal. Um, and yeah. I've been the last couple of years, I've gotten lucky enough, so I'm gonna I'll apply this year. Um, and we'll see how that goes. And if I get in, that's definitely on the map. Um, so that show for sure. And and I think at this point, it's me just coming in a little drier, a little leaner. Um, some of those girls are still a little bit bigger than me, so we'll see how this comes up with this this year. Um, I don't I don't necessarily know we. I've always thought the last, especially these last two years, that I should have placed higher. And we, you know, me and my coach are going back and forth with that. So it's like, but you know, you never know. So, I mean, I'm always happy to get the invite and be invited to compete as long as I stay within the top ten, which I do. That's the goal. Yeah. It's just to kind of move up from there and to get into this top five. So whatever we gotta, hopefully, this package that we bring this time will do just that. So we'll see. No, I'm sure it will, because um, like you would tell me um. I think I had asked you a while back via DM about your size, like you're the biggest you've ever been at about 180, right? And now you're trying mm -hmm. to. Um, yeah, we got to one. We hit 185, which was the goal. So it's and it was it's wow. 185, and still trying to keep the midsection tight and not, you know, making sure that that you know that stays intact because that for me is huge. Like that's that's the winning <laughs> ticket. So. Um, yeah, but it's, and, and I'm like, I'm a hard gainer. I don't even realize it because I'm like, I'm trying to eat and like, can't miss a shake. And it's like, oh, like, yeah. So it was, it was a real, like, I hadn't done, I hadn't done cardio since the Olympia last year. So I was telling my coach, like, what's your cardio? Like, I'm not doing anything. I'm not doing nothing. I'm walking past it. I'm not doing anything. Um, 
but it was like to get to the size that we needed to gain. I'm like, I just, I'm like, I can't do anything extra. So it was very much like keeping the diet as clean as possible because I couldn't do any cardio, not even maintenance cardio to really, you know, keep the, you know, keep the body fat down while trying to wow. get, you know, get the weight up. So. And uh, just remind me again, how tall were you? Uh, five, five. Five, five. Oh, wow. You, you look so much taller in your videos and pictures. And I get it because it's I noticed. Five, five, 185. <laughs> and I always um, think that you're like five, eight, but because like when I see your videos on Instagram, you always have the camera on the ground that gives the illusion that you're talking is like, is looking up, you know, at uh, you. And I'm like, okay. Hey, you you're walking around five five with a hundred eight pounds. Damn, woo! It was a lot. Of and that was a hard. And I'm telling you, it was like for me, I'm like it was a hard fought one eighty five. I'm like, I don't know how people do. I just can't like, and I'm trying, like I'm literally trying to eat. I'm just, I'm just not hungry. And it's, and I'm not as hungry in off season when I should be. And that's just a mental thing. I'm just not as hungry because I can eat more. I'm like, eh, okay, here we go again. But yeah, yeah but we, we got to, we made it to go. So now it's trying to hold that while we, you know, cut down and, and start to lean out. So that's what I said. I haven't really picked a show. I mean, we always try and plan 16 to 20 weeks out. So, I mean, somewhere in there. Um, and then just kind of seeing, you know, how these first couple shows go and what the judges are really looking for and, you know, and how, you know, my look is going to, you know, align with that, and, you know, and stuff like that. So, I mean, if I can hit stage, you know, at 170, 172-ish, you know, dry and full, and you know that would be a, that would be ideal. I think an ideal weight. So, yeah, yeah. that'd be that'd be sweet. And I mean, I'm not doing it far. Like I can be in shape at over one seventy, and yeah. So, oh yeah, I'm sure you can hit that easily. Yeah, nah, that's that. Is, and speaking of cardio, are you one that you like to do cardio? Because I know with most bodybuilders, male or female, cardio is like the worst enemy. Unless <laughs> you just wire <laughs> different. You know? I mean, no, I don't particularly enjoy it but it it's, it gets done it, it's in slow increments most of my cardio is really done at home like i have a treadmill i have a spin bike i have a stair stepper um so the bulk of my cardio is done in my basement you know like away from people <laughs> so i can just bang it out i mean i might do 30 minutes at the gym you know post-workout but i do i do a lot of fasted cardio so and then i tend to i break up my cardio just kind of throughout the day i just feel like i burn better that way so you know, if I do an hour in the morning, and then it really depends on where we're at in prep. I have a certain amount of cardio that I'll do first thing in the morning, and once I reach that max, then we start a second session of cardio. So it's very kind of meticulous plan. You know, we have very small increments of cardio. Like, he increased it five minutes, five, yeah, literally five minutes over this last week, so. Oh, okay, that's not bad. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it gets up there. By the end of prep, you know, we're sitting at two hours and some change, but... <laughs> <laughs> It's like, wait, how do we get here? But yeah, it's like it's. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, just, so what? Just for the average person out there, and especially like with with a lot of men, you know, a lot of people want to get bigger, bigger, bigger. What were some of the foods, or, or or just some of the things that you were consuming to to add on that size? Um, more food, obviously. I mean, I take BCAs, I take creatine. I think those are just basic staples that are always going to be kind of a tried and true um, timing of those, I would say. So, I mean, yeah, and I mean, I take those more so than my, on my trans training days. Um, creatine and BCs are all standards. And then just food. Like, I, I eat <laughs> the amount of food that I had to increase to, you know, trying to consume, you know, over 4,000 calories a day and really, Thanks. yeah, over 300 grams of protein. Like, it's it, it was a lot of food. <laughs> So it's, and it, and it and it was in off season. I'm just I'm just not as hungry. So like because I'm not really as active. Like I don't I don't do any cardio versus you know doing two and three hours of cardio a day where I'm just burning, burning, burning. So I'm like everything kind of slows down a bit. So it's like I'm just I don't really need the food, but it's like you have to eat the food. So it's like, and I mean I was doing six meals, you know, six meals, two shakes, two protein shakes a day, six meals a day, you know, forty grams of protein each meal. So yeah, I mean, it gets yeah. Definitely a few times where I'm like, okay, I'd like to go to bed, but I need to finish this chicken first. But yeah, but I do. I, I, I definitely eat <laughs> eat a lot. We're not starving. It's that that's definitely yeah, sure. yeah. And then you know, it's like the old saying: you got to eat to grow. You know, you gotta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, my you know, my protein, my meal just got bigger. That's pretty much it. And the same thing with the carbs. You know, it's a cup and a half of rice. You know, at 
at every meal. So it's like just trying to get, you know, just trying to get everything down. You know. Yeah. So. Gotcha. Okay. And uh, moving on to last year's Olympia, you know, um, let me click on this here. Last year's Olympia, as always is, packed house. Um, <laughs> In, in the uh, the the top ten, um, okay. yeah, actually, uh, state competitors, yeah, yeah, you were able to place in the top ten. Um, what was the the uh, Olympia like for you? Um, the Olympia is always the Olympia. It's it's just an amazing experience, and you know, my family was there. We ended up doing a bunch of interviews and stuff with the kids, and like my kids love it. Like for us, it's a it's a family trip. So I'm like, for me, it's like I got to figure out how we're gonna get there every year. But like they like the expediters, like everyone behind back say like they know my kids now because they've literally been to every Olympia. So like, you know, so it's it's fun. It's it's like a family, it's our family trip. So we go, we stay a couple extra days past the Olympia just to hang out and stuff. So but like they have a blast. It's 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 always a good time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All and right. I mean I, I, yeah, this was probably my, my best perform my stage performance and everything. I yeah, this was probably my hands out my best performance on stage. So yeah, I had a had a blast. It was a good year. Nice. Right. And um, what aspect of bodybuilding, like once you're on stage, what aspect do you love the most? The the actual like the the flexing, the call outs, or the actual your posing routine, or just all of it? Um, probably all of it. I mean, I it's funny. Like I've fallen in love more so with like really embracing the routine. Especially like the evening routine. That's really for more for like the audience and stuff like that. So before I used to think about like, oh my gosh, like that was like my least favorite. But like I've having I have like for the last couple of years, I'm like, you know what, this is for the audience, this is what they come to see. And like I'm just really started embracing, like embracing that part of it and like, you know, enjoy picking the music and enjoy really learning the routines. Um, it's yeah, I like it all. I mean, I, I like it all. I like the comparisons when we're out, you know, when we're out there and you're seeing every, like everybody. And like we're grouping off backstage. So like backstage is like, and it was like, okay, everybody get serious. Cause now it's like you gotta focus and really perform. But I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I like I like it a lot. I enjoy competing. It's you know, it's 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 fun, it's discipline, it's a lot of it's 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 definitely a lot of like mental like fortitude. But I mean I, I enjoy it. I like I mean I've been able to travel because of it. I met some really cool people because of it. You know, my family's got to travel and see me, and you know, we get to do stuff, and it's it's fun. So you know, I, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's dope. Um, what do you see the sport going as a whole? Well, specifically in the women's division, because there's been a thing that's kind of popped up on social media that, and and this this comes and goes on both the male and the female side. It's like, okay. Is it time to start scaling back because women are getting too big and, and men getting, well, I guess now we're talking about the women, or is it time to scale back? And I'm one of the ones like, well, you got other divisions. You got physique. If a woman doesn't want to be super huge, she could do physique mm -hmm. or figure. You know, what are, you, what are your thoughts on that? Um, I don't know. It's, it's a mixed bag. I, it, one minute, I feel like, you know, it's, it's they're bringing women's bodybuilding back and it's just huge campaign to really restore it because after it had been gone and kind of really taken away for so long um yeah. so like now and then even now like as the season has progressed now we've had another show added we actually we had two, a couple of new shows added um overseas and then elena just added hers um so but then it's like last year we only had like eight or ten shows versus you know a bikini or a physique who's got like 22 shows <laughs> literally yeah. versus you know the real like single digits so it kind of gives you like this mixed bag and like one of my friends in suit sponsor um michelle bachman she's actually competing at the triple dynasty um this weekend you know she just got her she got her pro card last year but it was like those opportunities were few and far between she had to go and really find you know there was this whole thing and you only get it for this or this versus every other division they're giving out to each category you know so it gets it's a little frustrating where it's like you want to bring in new pros so that we have new blood, but they have yeah. but where the shows that for them to even turn pro, you know, so like, it, <laughs> yeah, you know, so it gets, it gets hard. So it's like, yes, you need to, so it's, I don't know. It, it's, it's a constant kind of back and forth. I feel like now, like this year, um, 
we've had a couple more shows added. So it's like, okay, well, that's good. So let's see how the turnout is with, with these shows added. And I, and I feel like some of the promoters, if they take more of a chance on women's bodybuilding, I think it's, it's, a, it's a ticket that sells. I think that it's awesome that Elena's doing her show and there's only women's bodybuilding. So that's, you know, let's see how that's, let's see what the turnout is. But I think it's, I don't know, there's, there's it's a lot. It's a lot. I just think there definitely needs to be some more shows on the amateur level too, or at least more, just have the category, you know, so they can at least have an option to turn pro in the first place, you know, because those shows are so, so far and few in between to get even new pros over, over here. Um, and then, yeah, it was like, we had a big stem where there wasn't a, you know, we had this huge, huge gap, but then I felt like we got a few extra shows. Then last year kind of fell off a bit. Um, so now it's like, I don't know, we're in the middle ground now because there has been two shows added in women's bodybuilding since the original schedule came out. So it's like, okay, we're up to like double digit in shows now. So it's like, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. <laughs> I hope that, you know, I don't, I don't think it's, I don't foresee it going anywhere. I think we're going to start to grow and it's going to, you know, kind of pick back up these next couple of years. That's what I foresee. I think, you know, Thanks. with Andrea coming in and doing her show now and she, and I feel like she has to, I mean, Miss Olympia has to like, this is huge and bringing the triple dynasty and stuff. That's, that's, that's a big, that's a big deal. You know, we need more of that. Elena's doing her show now. Like we need more of that so that people see it and see us. I mean, I had a blast in Romania. You know, and there were 18 women, there were 18 of us competing and the fans were in it. And like, they were, you know, screaming and like we, the fans over there were absolutely amazing. You know, they, they really were like, like really into it. So, you know. Yeah. And I, it's, it's funny you bring up Romania. Um, and before I get into it, actually about that, I noticed that with overseas, like I remember um, a while back, I was watching an episode of um, Real Sports with Brian Gumble, and they talked about the difference between like the WNBA here in America and women's mm -hmm. basketball overseas. Yeah. And it's like women's basketball overseas, their yeah. fans are fanatics. Like they yeah. go bomb yeah. like yeah. men do for the NFL out here. And even the men, you got these grown big burly uh -huh. men like yeah. myself out yeah. there cheering on, you know, the women basketball teams out there in Europe and Russia and then even, you know, the Asian yeah. countries. I'm like, Damn, why can't we get that in the States? You know what I mean? Like we and, and, that and, and I remember when I, before I went, I talked to Monique, I talked to Monique yeah. Jones, I talked to Mela, and I was like, yeah, because they had both been in like Bucharest, and I was like, well, what can I expect? Like, let me, you know, and they're like, girl, they're going to love you over there. And I was like, okay, but it, it was, and I got it. I was like, oh, this is great. It's, I had, yeah, I had a blast. Like, the, the and people were just, it was cool. It was really, really cool. So any yeah. chance I have to go back or go to like travel and do stuff like that, I'm like, if I'm going to pick a show, like I did an interview with, with Dave Palumbo and we said the same thing. He's like, I don't know why more people don't do it to travel. Like I, half of me going, half of me doing Romania and luckily winning with me going, oh, that looks cool. Let me just go see. I didn't do nothing. I didn't Google nothing. My wife told me it was 13 hours. I was like, oh, wait. I, like, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> okay. Better bring a couple of books to read or something on it. Like, I had literally no idea. I was like, mm, that's far. That's, that's a long time in the air. <laughs> First, I traveled, so I was like, <laughs> you got extra leg room, your seats and stuff. Man, I'm going to need to sleep this, yeah. <laughs> uh, good time, though. It was good. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, yeah I, I'm glad Romania uh, worked out for you. You got to experience that that yeah. real fan fanatic. Uh, mm -hmm. and, it, and it's, they're like that. And it, it is. They're like that with, like, all sports. Like, I don't even know why. They're just, they're just like that. It's like, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was watching that real sports piece, and I'm like, it's like night and day yeah, how yeah. we support their women's sports versus, you know, here in the States. And hopefully, you know, one day we can get it like that because college mm -hmm. women's basketball is picking up. Their ratings are going up. It's and not picking up. Dawn Staley is single-handedly carrying it on her back right now. Yeah. She is like... yeah. Yeah, doing it, man. Yeah. I, was, I was talking yeah. to a buddy of last night because we're both big sports nerds and uh we follow a lot of college and i uh, was like man I believe that south carolina is still undefeated i said i think it's gonna be between south carolina and, and lsu and i'm originally from louisiana so yeah i gotta root for my tigers but wrong. i wouldn't be mad if okay, wanted to be you know like <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah. I'm like, in Dawn State, I've been following her since back in her college days. <laughs> so, yeah. 
he was a beast in college too, and all that knowledge Man. and expertise in college and the WNBA. I mean, and now yeah. she's coaching and and just yeah. taking but, in not only her team but the whole sport to new heights. Literally, it's a, yeah. Yeah. It's theory that outside of bodybuilding, do you follow any other sports? Are you a fan of any other? I would say women's basketball. Like, yeah. And this is the same thing, like, with, like, uh, Caitlin. Like, there, I mean, I I would say that's probably the only thing I really really do follow. Um, I mean, I can, like, watch tennis and stuff like that, but I would say, like, basketball is probably the thing that I watch the most if I'm not doing bodybuilding stuff. Yeah. That and like Bluey, because you know my kids. <laughs> That's like... Yeah, okay. yeah, okay, <laughs> yeah. I was, I was thinking about incorporating that in my questions. And uh, one of the five questions I want to ask you here. First, two part question. Part one: Who are your Mount Rushmore of female bodybuilders? Um. I mean, Linda, Linda Murray for sure. Um, I don't know, I feel like that's probably the one whose physique I think I admire the most. I feel like I probably kind of mimic the most. Um, so yeah, she's probably like my go-to as far as like a physique that I would say that I have or, you know, would want to have. Um, so it, I, I used to always say for me, it was it, it would be like, um, if I were like the love child was like her and like Cedric, the late Cedric McMillan, like he, those were like my, my two people. Like if I had to be like, yeah, but like, yeah, Linda for sure is definitely paved, paved a huge way. Okay. And, and she has definitely brought people over into women's bodybuilding a lot too. Um, that's really when I switched okay. over. I mean, so many more people that she kind of pulled aside and, and talked to and been like, Hey, you know, it's time to move over. You know, we're trying. So, I mean, I feel like she's been definitely campaigning for us a lot too. And, Trying to get more people to switch over. Yeah, I've I've heard stories of her numerous times on this podcast, and then I've actually seen it. And when I watch mm-hmm. other podcasts and women are talking, it's like, yeah, I was in a show and I was a figure. Linda Murray pulled me over and <laughs> we talking yesterday, and I'm like, she's like the, the best recruiter. <laughs> you just see someone and pull them over. Hey, I'm gonna try with the bodybuilding, you know? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> um, give me a, give me a three more for women. Oh, or is Linda, like, your, your top, I, mean, just... I would say Linda's probably top. I mean, Elena Popa, I've liked her physique. Um, I mean, she would start back out in Rising Phoenix. Um, who else did I really like? I mean, Monique Jones, I would say I, I liked her physique too. She, you know, that was what she, yeah. yeah, I mean, I would, I would like to be able to carry that amount of mass and still keep that like small waist that she has. Um, yeah, like I used to, yeah. she's helping me with my posing and stuff in the past too. And like, she's huge on like the flexibility and mobility and stuff, but like the amount of mass that she can carry and keep her waist super tight, like she's had, a, she has an amazing physique for me too. So, you know, I probably said, yeah. her into the mix yet. Yeah. For a while, I said she was truly a mass monster. And I remember <laughs> um, the thing recently, like a QA on her Instagram. And someone asked her, what's the biggest she ever was? And I think she said, like, I don't want to go up. It was somewhere in the high 200s. Over 200. That's what I'm like. And it's bananas to me. And I remember when I, the very first time I met her, and I met her at the Arnold years ago when I first started competing, I was just like, oh, and she was still with Species Nutrition. I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Let me get a yeah, picture yeah. with me. Yeah, and, I, and I remember I, I told her that. I'm like, you remember that? I was like, we were doing a posing session. Uh, uh because I was in prep for the Rising Phoenix one year. And uh, me and I were joking about it. I'm like, remember the first time I saw you and I was just trying to get a picture with you? <laughs> and in the very first Rising Phoenix, she actually competed. So I actually got to compete with her too, which was pretty cool. I'm like, it, oh. that was like literally the epitome of, you know, like how were your idols turned into your rival? I'm like, I'm now competing against you. Yeah. And it, it was just like, for me, I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's dope. Cool. And even now, like she hasn't competed in a while, but like you know, you, you look at her Instagram. Yeah, like, yeah. She's so like, she has that name in women's body. For me, it's like when I say like Monique, Monique Jones, everyone's like, "Yo, yeah, everyone knows who Monique Jones is." And I'm like, she whether she ever competes again, she solidified herself in women's bodybuilding as a you know a women's bodybuilder. Like that's just you know that's how you know her. So I feel like she's yeah, and she's always someone that I, if I have a question, I'll go get feedback from. 
yeah, you know, I, I like her style. I've, I've worked with her in the past several times. So, like, yeah, she's definitely yeah, she's a great pose. Like, pretty soon. <laughs> knows how to dance, and, and she could be a choreographer or something in, in Hollywood or something. And she's mm-hmm. still, like, maintaining, like, a lot of muscle for no damn so, reason. Like, you have to get yeah. it. Yeah. In a while, I, mean, I guess she likes to look at herself, and hell, I yeah. like it too. As a man, it's scary, and you know, she's still, a lot like, of still regimented, like with her diet and stuff, and like, because like we've talked about, like she's like super, and it's 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 a lifestyle. It's, it literally is just you know on and off stage. It truly is just when I mean, you just fall into that. So I'm like, I admire that level of just maintenance discipline. It's just like yeah, like you know your body, like you literally are so in tune, and that's kind of where I met this year. like really just learning my body and really. Kind of how things go, and so I'm like, yeah, this is, this whole process is, is is really interesting. That's something I'm gonna. She's getting some phone calls pretty soon too. My my inner circle is, is pretty small as far as coaches, but like she's definitely yeah. she's definitely. In there. So. Oh, I bet. In a second part of the question, um, who are your Mount Rushmore of male bodybuilders? Um. Probably Cedric. Uh, and Sean, yeah, Sean would probably be my my two. Um, and then I can I can compare it to Flex Wheeler, so <laughs> so those, I guess that would be my three. Yeah, yeah. Okay, give me uh one more. Um, still I like Samson. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, said, yeah. I actually <laughs> he posted a video on Friday. I was trying to watch March Madness and, and I'm just like, what the f-? like he took off his shirt yeah. at the gym and I'm <laughs> like, God, Lee has a crazy amount of mass. And it looks like he's I never met him in person yet, but it looks like he's, you know, like a shorter guy and he's just He's just he's got it. some mass, but he's all he's got some aesthetic. I, I definitely yeah, aesthetic, aesthetic look. Yeah. 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 So no, no doubt. No doubt. Dude, and I gotta ask you this question, but um and and I I hate to ask you, but I gotta I gotta ask you. I know some people out there are wondering, do you plan on retiring? Now I'm not saying I want you to retire, no one's saying that, <laughs> but just as a podcast, I'm just, just throwing it out there. Absolutely. Um Nah, I'm good. I'm healthy. I'm happy. <laughs> you know, not this year, anyway. <laughs> and I, and I, I'm, I'm just, yeah. And it's, and it's funny because, like, I always feel like I was talking. To, I always talk to people, and I'm like, bodybuilding is so different. Like, you, I mean, even with hence the, the Masters Olympia, like, the person that it came down to was was 50. Me and her, Barbara, you know, from Brazil, was 50. You know, so like, and her glutes are straight, and you know that. So it's she's fifty. <laughs> yeah. So no, they're, they're, I, I don't have to retire. And, I mean, I'm forty three. I still got plenty of time, you know. Yeah. And I've taken. I mean, it's been some time since I've truly taken off a full year. I usually allow an off season of about four months or five months, something like that, before we kind of start up a new prep. Um, and it's been a few years since I've taken off a true year. And the last time I took off some time, it was almost two years. So and so I was, I just wasn't in a place for. It. But like these last few years, I've just been. The years of, they, I've just gotten better every year. You know, everything has gotten better. Everything is just coming together better. Uh, yeah, the coaching better. I was fine to the coaching better. The train, like everything is just kind of coming along. So I feel like, especially like this year, I'm, I'm just kind of chilling. I'm, I'm, I'm just we're meticulously focused. Me and my coach have not been together a couple of years. So like he knows how to prep me and we're just really just taking our, our, our time with this and just being super slow and, and, and purposeful with, with this prep. So, yeah. Gotcha. No, that's, that's, but I ain't not No time soon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm happy to hear it. Glad to hear that. We need you yeah, around. As long as, still, as long as I still enjoy competing and there's no rush to hit stage, you know, like, you know, and some girls take some time off and, you know, they'll be back next year. And maybe next year, because I did that last year before Masters. I actually said I was going to take off last year. I was like, I'll just give my body a break and take some time off. And then that show popped up and I was like, mm, let's see. And then that, yeah. lo and behold, there we go. So... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, champ, man. And, yeah. you know, that's the thing about bodybuilding, like you said, other sports, it's like the older you get because of muscle maturity and everything, mm-hmm. the yeah, you can comp- 
competing and well into your, you know, like you said, the woman that went against you, like in your 50s, you know, or you could start in your 30s, you know, or, you know, you start to get exactly. an amateur. So that, and that's why I feel like, I feel like the muscle, my, my training has changed, you know, and just like my, my ability to, to connect with the muscle that like, that's like the coaching has changed. So my, yeah. my training has changed. So I feel like I'm really tapping into that now and very specifically this year. So I said, I'm really, so again, I'm really curious to see how this all plays, how this all plays out. If it goes, how we plan, how we plan. Um, but yeah, but like, this is, this is even better now as, I, as I've gotten older and learned so much more as far as how to train, how to pose, how to do this. You know, now it's, it's finally time to just bring it, bring it all together, you know, and yeah, so. Go, go. Uh, and as we uh, close out, just want to thank you again for taking the time on this Easter Sunday. Happy Easter to you and your family. Hope the kids are collecting a lot of eggs and whatnot. <laughs> House going to be full of candy and eggshells. <laughs> um, give us a flex on the way out. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got. Uh, let me see. Let me get the arms up a bit. They won't even fit on the screen. <laughs> but it's like, wait, I got a couple. Let me see. Yeah, we're, we're still. Okay. Hey, you oh. look phenomenal. Ass. Yeah. yeah, we're still in there. Nice. Freaking appreciate that. And uh tell people where they can find you on social media. Um Instagram, uh Rashana underscore Boswell underscore IFBB underscore pro. Um and then any Facebook, all that kind of stuff, just Google Rashana. But Instagram is the best place to find me. That's where I post um most of my updates or anyone looking for training or any of that kind of stuff. Um I always put Instagram. So Email address and all that stuff there too. Okay, and I'll include the links in the uh, description. And uh, also, people here at the Unrestricted Podcast, feel free to like, share, and subscribe if you want to support us for free. Tell people about this episode. Let us know what you think. You can go to our website at theunrestrictedpodcast.com. We got a whole bunch of goodies there. And if you want to support the podcast monetarily, throw us a couple of dollars here and there. You can make one-time donations uh, with Cash App and PayPal, link in the description. And you can also uh, make a monthly donation between $1 to $3 on Patreon. And that is patreon.com slash The Unrestricted Podcast. Yeah. So um, you're going to be eating any of your kids' candy when they come back? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're definitely willing into this, to this prep. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just, I just know, like, in the long run, it'll, it'll pay, it'll pay, it'll pay off. Yeah, right. That's right. Think about the end goal. That's mm -hmm. right. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Well, first place uh, championships there for you. Well, again, champ, thank you for uh, taking the time this Sunday evening. And for everybody out there, take care of yourselves and each other. We're out of here. Signing Happy off. Easter. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Want to help the channel remain upstanding and dedicated to the truth? then consider becoming a channel patron. The link to our Patreon account is in the description below.